Welcome to Salem Sets the Stage, our Salem celebration of the adoption of the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution. This momentous occasion took place 100 years ago on August 26, 1920. As an institution dedicated to the education and empowerment of women and girls, we felt it was important and fitting to have our own celebration of the significant event as part of the National Women Take the Stage event which is to follow. Although we cannot be together in person, we can gather virtually as we enjoy some music, learn a bit about the history, and hear some powerful reflections on the importance of the 19th Amendment. To start things off, local musician Martha Bassett and her band will perform a song inspired by our Sojourner Truth entitled Anti A Woman. This was written by Sarah Howe Miller, a Winston-Salem singer-songwriter and a minister at Green Street Church in the nearby West Salem neighborhood. Here is Sarah to share a little more about her song. Hi, I'm Sarah Howell Miller, and on behalf of myself and Martha Bassett, we are honored to be a part of this event. The song you're about to hear is based on a famous speech delivered by Sojourner Truth in 1851. The speech was a powerful assertion of Sojourner Truth's own humanity and dignity and a condemnation of the intersectional oppressions of racism and sexism that she experienced as a formerly enslaved woman. The song felt fitting for this occasion, but it's important that we hear these words as the words of a black woman, even as Martha and other members of our band sing them. Although the 19th Amendment theoretically gave the right to vote to all women, it would be decades before black women would be able to exercise that right. As we celebrate this historic milestone, we remember that the work of the 19th Amendment was far from complete on the day of its ratification, and our work is still not complete today. May this celebration of women's empowerment also be a call to continue to labor for justice and equity for all. Hello, 
I am Dr. Elizabeth Wimlingo. I teach political science and public policy at Salem College, and I am the co-director of the newly formed Center for Women's Political Engagement and Public Service at Salem College. We created the Center to provide a place for women and girls to further their political interests and to connect with civic opportunities in Winston-Salem and the surrounding community. While women today are not prevented from voting, they continue to be politically marginalized, making up less than a quarter of women in Congress and less than a third of state legislative seats. The U.S. has never had a female president, a female vice president, or a female chief justice of the Supreme Court. When examining the political representation of minority women, the numbers are even more troubling. The glass ceiling in U.S. politics is still quite strong. The center sees the power of providing opportunities for women to be engaged in the political environment from a young age and to develop the skills and experiences to help women leaders break this glass ceiling. We are excited to provide a space to facilitate women and girls as they expand their interest and influence in local, state, and national politics. We are providing resources on how to vote, what will be on the ballot, or how to volunteer for a campaign, how to contact your representative, and how to connect with an interest group. We are creating a shared space to learn about the ways that women's lives are impacted by public policy and the ways that women can work to change these outcomes for the better. Women play a vital role in communities, providing services and advocating for change. This year, we begin the work on the center virtually instead of in person. We will provide multiple resources, virtual meetings and workshops. We hope you take a look at our website, cwpeps.salem.edu, and sign up for the email list so that we can notify you about upcoming events. We are eager to partner with the many leaders on the Women Take the Stage national event to celebrate the progress toward equality and to advocate for the continuing role of women and girls as leaders for change in our community and beyond. Last spring, Archives was asked to begin researching Salem Academy and College and the suffrage movement leading up to the ratification of the 19th Amendment. We found there wasn't a lot of material addressing this in our records, so when we were asked to prepare an exhibit of what we did have for the opening of the fall 2019 semester, we had to get a little creative. By pulling in photographs, perusing personal student scrapbooks from that era, and searching historic newspapers, we found the information we felt we needed to tell Salem's story. North Carolina and the South as a whole was slow to support woman suffrage, and Salem Academy and College was no different. The first attempt to address the suffrage issue recorded in our institutional records occurred in 1912 with the organization of the Salem College Suffrage League. The league consisted of 15 members, 14 faculty members, and Katherine Rontaler, the wife of then institutional president, Howard Rontaler. Two of the members were men, and the president of the league, Louise Long, was a faculty member in the institution's preparatory or graded school. Amelia Worthington, an outspoken suffragist from Alabama, spoke at their organizational meeting on November 18th, at which time no one probably thought that it would disband the following month. No definitive evidence has been discovered as to why this happened. While brief mention of the suffrage movement appeared sporadically in Salem documents over the next four or five years, it didn't fully get the institution's attention again until 1917. On October 16th of that year, the Winston-Salem Rotary Club and Salem Academy and College co-sponsored a lecture by Jeanette Rankin of Montana, the first woman in Congress. She delivered a 90-minute talk to a capacity house in Salem's Alumni Memorial Hall in which she argued for equal rights for women and obviously made her point. One student, Lala R. Fleming, 
college class of 1920, even reviewed this event in the Ivy, a quarterly student literary publication. Surprisingly little documentation has been discovered of student activity in the suffrage movement. Perhaps they were too occupied with their studies, we just don't know. That can't be said, however, of Salem's alumni, who frequently reported their suffrage activity, both for and against, in the monthly alumni newsletters. Interestingly, many alumni were presidents or other officers in their local suffrage organizations. The 19th Amendment was passed on June 4, 1919 and ratified on August 18, 1920. In December of that year, an article in the alumni record recognized its passage and congratulated American women in general and Salem daughters in particular on exercising their new right to vote, not taking it lightly, and voting according to their own highest principles and ideals. Hi, I'm Layla Muhammad. I'm a journalist, TV host, and radio news anchor in Los Angeles, and a proud alumna of Salem College Class of 2003. Salem is where I got the confidence to pursue my dreams. It's where I strengthened my desire to be of service to others. And it's also where I saw young women for the first time in my life really engaged in the political process. I was a student at Salem during the 2000 presidential election. One of the presidential debates was held right down the street at Wake Forest University. And over on Salem's campus, my sisters were engaged in some healthy debates and conversations about issues and policies that affected us as women. And while everyone did not see eye to eye when it came to politics, we shared a common excitement when it came to voting. The women who marched and fought for the right to vote and for gender equality understood the power of their voices and the value of the vote. And yet it's something so many still take for granted today. Don't let your voice be silenced, get informed, Get involved. Let's do our part. Let's vote. Hello, my name is Felicia Penn. I am a graduate of Salem Academy, class of 2003, and current director of student activities at the Academy. Today, as we celebrate the ratification of the 19th Amendment, Salem Academy and college students continue to espouse the highest principles and ideals of our community. As stated on The Daily Show by Veronica Chambers, author of Finish the Fight, the brave and revolutionary women who fought for the right to vote. The women of the movement weren't just suffragists, they were also futurists. Throughout history, the academy and college have prepared its students to be the futurists of their generation. In this century, Salem College students advocated for a commitment by the institution to confront its relationship with slavery. Their protests in the spring of 2017 led to the school's apology for owning enslaved people in the current work of the Anna Maria Samuel Project, Race, Remembrance, and Reconciliation. In 2018, Salem Academy students staged a walkout in solidarity with local students from Parkland High School and hosted a panel with members from Florida's Stoneman Douglas High School community in support of gun control laws. Furthermore, Current academy and college students use clubs and organizations as vehicles for change and inclusion. In 2018, academy students formed the Black Student Union and a chapter of Girl Up. Black Student Union was created for black students and for students of color to have safe space for expression and cultural awareness. Additionally, Girl Up promotes the issues of equity and education for girls and women around the world. Within the college, organizations such as Black Americans Demonstrating Unity, the Hispanic Organization for Leadership Achievement, and Open Up offer spaces and opportunities for students to have open dialogue about tackling social justice issues and fosters the creation of allyship amongst students. Even from its roots in abolitionism, the suffrage movement echoes statements that are still spoken in the activism of today. Even though women were given the right to vote in 1920, obstacles and or laws were created to prevent primarily women of color from exercising these rights. Today, many of the same tactics are still being used to disenfranchise communities and limit needed resources. Rooted in making a difference in the Winston-Salem community, Salem Academy and college students have participated in local community service by donating thousands of hours of their energy and talent to endeavors ranging from voter registration drives, 
volunteering at local elementary schools, and to assisting with the cleanup in Happy Hill Cemetery, which is a part of Winston-Salem's oldest African-American neighborhood. Lastly, as an alumna of Salem Academy, I am proud to be a part of the footprint of service, change, and advocacy created by fellow Salem alums. Currently, as a staff member, my goal is to encourage every incoming student to understand the power of their voice, acknowledge the challenges each of them may face, and help them to work together in order to address the changes they want to see on campus and in the world. In sculpting students of today for the future, we may be able to elect them as our nation's president and vice president of our tomorrow. The right of women to vote has been a contested part of the American democratic system since the writing and adoption of the Constitution. The founders chose to allow states to define election laws, and this resulted in women remaining largely unable to vote for nearly 100 years. As the Western territories began being admitted as states, Many of these states, like Wyoming, Colorado, and Utah, extended the vote to women. This re-energized the women's suffrage movement, and there was hope that the state-level strategy, rather than focusing on a national constitutional amendment, was the most viable avenue for extending the vote to women. Yet, after a number of states voted down measures, it became clear that this strategy would largely leave a majority of women in the U.S. disenfranchised. Alice Paul and a more aggressive National Women's Party, using techniques from the British suffragettes, began actively advocating for a constitutional amendment. They picketed the White House, holding up signs with President Woodrow Wilson's words in favor of democracy overseas as a rebuke of his lack of support for women's suffrage at home. The reaction to the picketers was violent, with many of them imprisoned and beaten, yet they continued to picket. Their actions and the public support of the picketers had the impact of changing the attitudes of many in Congress and President Wilson. The 19th Amendment was passed by the House and Senate in the summer of 1919, and the state ratification process began, needing three quarters of states to adopt the amendment. The process began with many states adopting the amendment. Yet, as it moved to the southern states, like North Carolina, it was rejected by state legislatures, causing fears that it might not be able to meet the three-quarters threshold. Yet, it was ratified by one vote in Tennessee, the final state needed to adopt the amendment, on August 18, 1920, and formally certified as the 19th Amendment to the Constitution 100 years ago today, August 26, 1920. And now, the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution. Section 1. The right of the citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of sex. Section 2. Congress shall have power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. Hi, I'm Marshall Chapman. I'm a Graduate, grateful graduate of Salem Academy in Winston-Salem, North Carolina, class of 1967, which means I was born in 1949. And the amazing thing is, women had had the right to vote only 29 years when I was born. That's hard to believe. And so this week, we're celebrating that 100th anniversary of the ratification of the 19th Amendment, giving women the right to vote. And those women marched and fought and did everything they could so we could vote. And they, it all begins with a dream. So I'm gonna sing you a song I wrote called I'm a Dreamer, cause that's where it starts. I'm a dreamer. Nobody can see a dreamer. It's my job rearranging reality. People think I'm crazy. I don't care. People think I'm lazy. They are unaware that it's a full-time job. I'm a dreamer. 
imagination runs away with me, a dreamer. It's a trip to be this happy and free. My head's in the clouds, what a view. I'm gonna shout it out loud, maybe you. You are a dreamer too. Ah ha 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 ha. Ah ha ha. Ah ha 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 ha. Ah ha ha. I reach for the stars. It's the least I can do. Imagination runs away with me, a dreamer. Every day I live is an adventure, a dreamer. I dream from January to December, a dreamer. I've been this way since I can remember, a dreamer. Dreamer too. Just keep dreaming, everybody. Dreamer. Yeah. You have heard a lot about the 19th Amendment tonight. In this election year, this significant moment in American history reminds us about the importance of exercising our right to vote. While we all vote for national, state, and local offices, each state has distinct laws regarding registration, residency, and absentee or mailing voting. You can find information on how to register and where to vote at vote411.org. Simply click on your state and you will be provided with information you need regarding how to register to vote and where you vote, whether in person or by mail. You must be registered to vote in order to vote on election day. Don't wait. Make sure you are registered today. Good evening, I'm Judy Woodruff, anchor and managing editor of the PBS NewsHour. As you might imagine, I've been thinking a lot about the importance of voting and about the right to vote while covering the back-to-back -back 2020 national conventions these past two weeks. These are momentous times. While these conventions were taking place, we began celebrating the centennial of the formal adoption of the 19th Amendment to the United States Constitution. After decades of struggle, women claimed what always should have been our right, the right to vote. Like your interim president, Susan Henking, I'm a Duke graduate. For that reason, and because my husband and son went to Wake Forest, I know North Carolina well. In fact, I've visited Winston-Salem many times, and I've enjoyed your beautiful campus. I can't think of a more fitting institution to celebrate this milestone toward equality and inclusion than one that has been educating women and girls for nearly 250 years. As Salem sets the stage, I know we all celebrate the many ways that women can and must take the stage today and tomorrow as thinkers, artists, writers, scientists, entrepreneurs, leaders, and indeed as presidents of the United States. At Salem Academy and College, we know that history matters. As we look back across our nearly 250 years, we celebrate our Moravian heritage, our history of excellence in education, our amazing alums, faculty, staff, leadership, and more. Yet, as we look back, we also see our flaws, including our involvement in the enslavement of others, a shameful episode in our nation's and our own history. We see Salem for who she has been and who she, we, can be. In this, we are not alone. 
Like our nation, whose origin we precede, we celebrate victories, even as we draw on our deepest values to change. In the case of our nation, this means moving beyond the inhumanity and injustice enshrined in our very founding documents by drawing on the aspirations to equality enshrined in those very same documents. It means, as Nell Morton once pointed out, hearing one another to speech, truly listening and acting to build a future alongside one another in the honest and forthright fullness of our differences. Today we celebrate a victory, the ratification of the 19th Amendment. We recognize that moment when across the border in Tennessee, one vote made a difference, even as we recognize that getting there required many, many years of hunger strikes and marches, of persuasion and argument. We know it took more decades of struggle to reach the legal inclusion of indigenous women, Chinese and Japanese women, African-American women. We know it was nearly 51 years later that North Carolina ratified the 19th Amendment. We know the struggle continues and that the struggle must continue. Today, Women's Equality Day, we celebrate a moment that is part of a movement, one where we draw on aspirations and ideals to build a more perfect union. We pause to celebrate not only FDOC, the first day of classes, but much more. We pause to join with a wider, a widening community of criticism, generosity, and hope. It is my pleasure and joy to invite you to one more event tonight, Women Take the Stage. I am grateful to Professor of Women's Studies, Betty M. Bayer of Hobart and William Smith Colleges, to Karen Weiss of Intuit, and to Ali Pal of the band Betty for inviting us to join their extraordinary set of voices tonight. Rooted in a long-standing August tradition in the small town of Seneca Falls, New York, Women Take the Stage has redefined what a stage is. I'll see you there. And meanwhile, good night.